There's another alcohol fuel that's so versatile, you can make it just about anywhere. And we mean anywhere. Dr. Robert Zubrin is a scientist working with NASA to find the best fuel to use on missions to Mars. His choice was methanol. Methanol, also known as wood alcohol, is the simplest alcohol you can make. Mars has both water and carbon dioxide, and that's all you need to make methanol. Methanol is an alcohol. It is a liquid. It looks like water. It's much better than gasoline in terms of air pollution. To give you a sense of how much cleaner methanol is than gasoline, we're going to conduct a little experiment here where we're going to burn the two of them side by side. This is methanol, and as you can see, it's as clear as water. And this is gasoline, which has a slight yellow tinge. Methanol, gasoline. First, let's light the methanol. You can see the methanol is burning right now. This is an extremely clean burning flame. Now let's take a look at gasoline. By comparison to methanol, this is filthy. It's got soot, it's got particulate emissions. That's what you're putting up into the air when you burn gasoline. And look at the residue. Methanol, there's no residue at all. It's a completely clean burning fuel. They're also safer than gasoline cars. They're much less likely to catch fire in the event of a crash, which is why uh, race car drivers have preferred methanol uh, for decades. For almost 100 years, race car teams have competed to win the Pikes Peak Climb. The race is a treacherous 12.5 mile ascent with 156 hairpin turns at speeds as high as 200 miles an hour. It's an extremely challenging race, and teams do everything possible to ensure safety, including choosing to run on methanol fuel. 19 years, we've been running methanol. It's just uh, much better fuel for racing. A barrel of methanol costs you $150. A barrel of race gas is almost 700 now. It costs a third of what race gas does. If methanol is so great, why isn't it available at the pump? Well, not that long ago, it was. Soon after the oil shocks of the 1970s, America's cities faced another petroleum-related emergency. Here's a sight not uncommon here in the Southland. Smog as thick as pea soup often envelops our area. Smog alert warnings lit up the Caltrans signs along L.A. freeways again today. As a way to clean up vehicle emissions, California began to test methanol. In 1981, the state government convinced the Ford Motor Company to specially make methanol cars. Volkswagen joined in, producing their own methanol cars. A number of trucks and buses also started running on methanol. It's a step in the right direction. The idea is to get the technology out in the street, get people using it, and then you can start spreading the technology to, to more and more vehicles. I started working on the methanol program in 1979. The California Energy Commission, or CEC, was, was a motivator for this by working with the oil companies and getting the majors to all participate by putting in methanol-compatible dispensers in their branded fueling stations. It was a shotgun marriage, so to speak. The oil companies at that time, I think, felt that this was a good thing to try. Um, but as soon as they found a way out, they did. That way out came in 1990, when Congress passed amendments to the Clean Air Act. The federal government decided to require oil companies to clean up their gasoline by adding alcohol fuels like methanol. But instead of blending methanol into their gasoline, 
Big Oil came up with a different plan. They created reformulated gasoline. Reformulated gasoline contains chemicals that help clean up vehicle emissions, but some of those same chemicals cause cancer. The oil industry basically said, I have a new gasoline for you that does the same thing as methanol. And by the way, we think that that product will be cheaper than methanol. In the end, the oil companies won and methanol lost. There is no competition now at the pump. There would have been a, that competition had methanol stayed in the marketplace. But we've lost, we've lost that benefit. The materials that can be used to make methanol are extremely plentiful and cheap. It could be made from anything that either is or was once a plant. It could be made from coal. It could be made from natural gas. Right now, the United States is having a natural gas production boom. We have so much natural gas that we are flaring it, flaring it so much that you can see it from space. Today, methanol is primarily made from natural gas. The question of whether natural gas is going to play a role in this energy transition. There's a lot of burden on this industry to prove that it can be clean. There are clearly ways the industry can improve its practices. Love it or hate it, natural gas is likely here to stay. According to the Department of Energy, as a result of fracking, production of natural gas in the United States is projected to increase and by 2020, there could be enough additional natural gas to replace half of our imported fuel with methanol. But there are other ways to make methanol too. In Iceland, there's a facility that turns waste carbon dioxide into methanol fuel. Their carbon recycling system takes CO2 from natural geothermal steam, combines it with hydrogen made from water, and voila, methanol. When the plant is full capacity, we produce 5 million liters a year. Carbon Recycling's test program runs a number of cars on M50, a mixture of 50% methanol and 50% gasoline. In the near future, Carbon dioxide could be the perfect source for methanol fuel. For now, there's another practical, plentiful, and cheap resource from which to make methanol. At the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, the U.S. government has been studying how much fuel can be made from biomass. The Oak Ridge study was originally designed to look at how much biofuel we could make in the U.S. using biomass. So what they came up with was a billion tons. They did the study twice because people were so shocked by the number at the time. What is biomass? Biomass means ordinary wood, clippings, yard waste, agricultural waste of all types. It can mean municipal solid waste. It can be animal renderings and fats and wastes and greases and oils. All kinds of waste residues. The United States generates 240 million tons of trash every year, and about 160 million tons of it ends up in landfills. That 160 million tons could be converted in a device like this to 15 to 16 billion gallons of methanol. There's a billion tons of available biomass that can be affordably aggregated for biofuels without affecting other users of biomass. That's about the entire United States gasoline supply, so uh, really there's enough to replace all of it. One billion tons of biomass makes about 210 billion gallons of methanol. But to be conservative, let's say we could only convert 50%. That still equals enough fuel to run half of the cars in America. The cost to build methanol refineries, it's about $420 billion. But that's less than one year of operations in the Persian Gulf. Now, you can't go as far on a gallon of methanol. So for example, if methanol costs 120 per gallon, the relative cost would be about $2 a gallon for domestically produced fuel that's made from a multitude of sources. I think they're gonna go crazy in Texas. <laughs>
I think they're going to go crazy in Saudi Arabia.